Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So I'm gonna go over some of the basics of the Python programming language and compare them to Java because Java is one of the first languages that most people learn, especially because it's taught in like almost every single university. And you're gonna notice that Python is a lot more simple and a lot more beginner friendly. Okay, so let's accomplish our first task, the hello world task. Let's say we just wanna print something in Java. How do you do that? If you're familiar with Java, you know that everything has to go inside of a class. So let's define our class, public class main. Already we got our first problem. We called our class main, but in Java, our file is neat.java. It makes sense that it's .java, but in Java, the, the names have to match. So we have to call this neat because our file is called neat. Now, are we ready to print yet? Not quite, we gotta define a method. All code has to go inside of a method or functions and every method has to go inside of a class. So public, static, the return type is void, main, and our arguments. Okay, so that's awesome, we're good. Now we're finally ready to print. How are we gonna do that? Code has to go inside of a class, and inside of a class has to be a method, so if we want to print, we gotta use our system class and we gotta use the print line method. So now let's finally print, this is Java. And make sure, don't forget those semicolons, don't forget to dot your I's and cross your Q's. Okay, and now let's run it and make sure that it worked. Beautiful, this is Java. Now if we wanna do the exact same thing in Python, it's not too bad. We print using our print function or method and we put some text, this is Python. We don't really need any semicolons here. We just write the line of code, run it, this is Python. So we need less code and a lot less structure to accomplish the exact same task. But we know in programming, you can do a lot more than just print text. What if we wanted some data? What if we wanted to manipulate some data, store some data, do some fun stuff with data? We know in most programming languages have data structures, one of which is a hash map. And the type of data, let's say we wanted was string or text data, and we wanna map it to some more string or text data, we can use this hash map and define it just like this. And we got a problem. This file doesn't know what a hash map even is. We gotta import that from Java's utility library. Okay, so now we've declared our data, but we haven't really stored anything in it. So let's store some data and we're doing text data. So I'm gonna say, I wanna map Texas to smash. We've stored our data, let's print it. Let's see what it actually looks like. So system.out data, there we go. Texas equals smash. Texas is mapped to smash. Let's do the exact same thing in Python. So I want to define some data and the data I'm going to store is neat and I'm going to map it to code. So this is what we saved our curly braces for in Python. So these curly braces tell us that this is a hash map or dictionary is what people like to call it in Python. And we didn't need to say that it was a hash map. We didn't need extra text. We didn't need this. We didn't even need to import anything. And let's print it to make sure that it works. Print data, neat is mapped to code. Awesome. Let's store a little bit more data. Let's add data. I like Detroit, so let's add Detroit and smash. Now let's print it. So we got two entries in our data. We got Detroit and Texas both mapped to smash. What if we wanted to print these individually or we wanted to manipulate this data individually, not grouped together? 
Let's see how we can do that. If you're already familiar, you know we got loops to do this. We got a for loop. We're going to go through every entry of data that we have stored. So we want the key, which is the first string that we entered from our data dot key set. So for every single entry of data that we have, let's just print it. We're not going to do anything special. Okay, so how do we print it? We got our key, but where do we get our value from? The or the second string that we entered. Data dot get. Using our key, we can get the second string and let's print it. So key for formatting. So now we can print this individually. So originally you can see we still have it grouped together because that's what we're printing up here. But we also using our loop, we were able to print both of the entries individually. So if we wanted to do something special, we could. Okay, so what if we wanted to add a couple or some extra data in Python? Well, you can actually do that up here. You don't even need to do a method call. Let's add another neat code. And let's say we wanted to print each pair individually. In Python, we also have loops. So, so we're going to get every single key value pair in our data items. So every pair, we got our key value. We don't need to do an extra method call. We can do this simply. And now, again, printing is so simple. So we got it grouped together like we had originally, and we were also able to print each entry individually with a loop. Not too shabby, right? A quick two lines of code gets the job done. Now, I hope this highlights some of the benefits of using Python as opposed to Java. You can see a lot less code. Now, is Python perfect? Of course not. As our code grows, if we had a thousand lines of code, it might be pretty helpful to organize things in semicolons, to organize things in classes and methods, and Python does not force you to do that. As always, thank you so much for watching. Like and subscribe to support the channel, and I'll see you pretty soon.